which I haven't worked on it in a while. I gotta go do some stuff with Snail. I gotta make some video. And, um, and that's it. So, hang on, let me do this. Come on, jeez. Well, I can't edit, there you go. There you go. All right, so what I'm doing here is um, I added on like this extension, right? To make it larger, to make this, the top half larger. Now, it's made for somebody a certain size, right? So it has to be brought in a little bit. It doesn't want to be out like that. The farther back it is, the more of a problem it's going to be to the viewer so it has to be sort of like this and the person has to be able to stand this is like right here right this will be down just about an inch and it's made for a person a little bit shorter than me a couple inches so actually the concave part might be fine but i i, I need to get this going i need to um keep going forward so what I'm gonna do right now so I'm gonna take liquid nails I'm gonna, I'm gonna take some liquid nails and I'm gonna fill in some of these these areas and when they're filled in after they're filled in it's sort of dry then I'm gonna take a, um, a water-based primer and I'm gonna prime the whole damn thing after that I'm going to put on a coat of thin set and I'm going to smooth it out a whole lot. It's going to be smoothed out a whole lot. After it's on there, I'm going to polychrome it and then it's going to be real sort of shiny in this area and sort of dull, dull out toward the, towards the edge. It's going to be pretty. It is. It's going to be pretty. And when, um, I haven't really decided. There's a couple of things I, I'm not sure of. Hang on, I got to. And that's um, that. I think the the Venus. When I think about the Venus, the Venus should be pregnant. There's a few ways to do this. Um, one, a prosthetic device, and there's makeup done. It's my least favorite. Or there's a prosthetic device, it's on, and then that's also photoshopped. That could work. Or it's completely photoshopped. Or I get the model, I take molds off of the model's body, I make that pregnant, and then I make it animatronic, which is sort of what I lean towards. Um, You know, just make it into an animatronic sculpture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take take this and sort of make it less, um, sort of, I don't know, like it's it, not as drastic a, a slope and stuff. Kind of just blend in the edges on on these things, these flutes that go up. Now, if I, if I had a product that was uh, in a tub, that would be preferred. 
it would. I would prefer to use something like that. Um, the, only, the only thing that I have is either thin set or drywall compound. The drywall compound isn't going to, um, it isn't going to stay, it isn't going to stay in. Um, it, it's, it's real fragile. Um, I, you know, I don't, I don't think that it's a good idea to work with that product on this. It, it, you know, it could work on something, but it's, it's just not gonna, I don't think it's gonna fly with this thing. Now, what I just, what I just did there, so I took the hose, this is a water bait. They, they make a, well, they used to make a liquid nails that was uh, mineral spirits based. And uh, you know it, it worked, but you had to smooth it out with with mineral spirits or turpentine or or whatever. But um, this water-based stuff, spit works great, but this is way too large of an area. So no, no spit will be at, well, some might be at this. There was a, a parade that just went down the road. I'm like, I've never seen that before in beaver dams. Yeah, see, I don't know. I'm not sure how much, how many of these I can can actually do. This is going to take up so much liquid nails. Uh, I got two more tubes. Maybe I'll get lucky and there's another one in the car. Maybe I can do it. Definitely not buying anymore. I was, uh, was talking this morning to somebody. Like they, they said something in regards to um, not okay. This is this is what the deal was. She said something like, "Every time a man and a woman want to buy me a drink at a bar, I always know." what it's about. I'm not doing that. Right? So I was I said to her, I said, well, I was surprised for some reason because, well, you know, it's not really surprising. Like she's conservative in some respects, but she's she's not in others. Right? She's not that conservative about everything, I'll tell you that. But that, she's just like, nope. Um, I can, I can relate. I can. That is recipe for screwing up a um, a relationship. I think so. Somebody is gonna want. Somebody's gonna get jealous. Flat out. You're in a relationship with somebody. You shouldn't be in the same room doing fucking somebody in front of them or they be involved. I'm telling you, it causes problems. Don't do that. Um, you, you, I mean, seriously, you could say, I know, I know this, this one chick that she says she's totally doesn't get jealous at all. Right? Like you could, how she put it? She said, you could say I'm going out and I'm getting laid. I'd be totally cool with it. That's what she says, right? That's what she says. But I, I don't know. I'm just believing that anybody is really that. Um, um, I don't know what would the term be. There's some kind of term for it. Like, I, okay, let me put it like this. 
Everybody is sort of looking for love, right? And anybody that says that they're not is a liar. Now, I guess it is possible. You know, maybe that's just me too being uh, too conservative or something. Maybe it is possible to be in a loving relationship with more than one person. I just, um, I just find it hard to believe. You know, I just don't think it's going to go. Uh, it's not going to be easy straight. Instead of like one person, now you got, now you got two to deal with, right? And everybody has feelings. You could say that that's not going to affect you. Oh, it, it would if you were in a poly relationship and the person just wanted to have sex with the other person. It would affect you. You would notice. You would know. It would be noticeable for sure. Um, I, I, I remember when I was younger, I was, well, I'm gonna, I was gonna say I was more idealistic. Uh, well, I was more idealistic about some stuff, but I'm more idealistic now, I think. I'm different than I was younger. And, um, you know, I, for my uh, statistical analysis here, I'm using things that people say. They are all younger than me. You know, I, I, don't, I don't remember if I would have, in my youth, would have said, oh, yeah, I could... I could marry two broads. I don't think I would. Um, so I don't think it has to do with that. Cer certainly, certainly some people are more liberal and easygoing sexually, you know, than others. I'm, uh, I don't know, I'm pretty conservative. So anyway, so, you know, I did sort of apologize to her for being so, um, Presumptuous. That's presumptuous thinking that she would, you know, uh, jump at the chance to, you know, there's a guy and a woman and they want to take me home. It's presumptuous. Definitely presumptuous. Um, I wouldn't want to do it. Maybe it was two women that were married. Maybe. I'd definitely consider that, but I don't want to go home with a guy and his wife. No, thank you. I, I, would, I would pass on that. I would pass on that. I don't care how good looking his wife is. Like, dude, what are you, did you touch my ankle? You know? I know it sounds homophobic. I realize that. I'm just being truthful. You know? I, I, just, I just can't do that, man. Like, dude, I, could you leave the room? No thanks. That's how it would be. I could I couldn't do anything like that. So this is what I'm doing here, here with the liquid nails. None of this has to be perfect. Um, it's not. It's just about like taking a volume here. Because if I, if I don't do this, when I do use the, the product, the thin set, it's going to take a whole lot more. That stuff does thin out, or, uh, you know, you can really smooth it out real good. And also, this, this liquid nails is going to sort of tack, uh, tack the foam extensions that I put on it to the, that's uh, foam extensions on top of metal flashing pretty much. I am, I'm a bore. I, I said it to her, I said, man, I, and I guess she is sort of too. 
Um, it's, you know, when I think about it, it's not really a shock. It isn't, because she is so, sort of real conservative in a way. You know, like sort of, I don't know, is she an exhibitionist? Uh, she's probably narcissistic, this would be the term. Like she's into her look. You know, but there's a lot of chicks like that. I know, I know so many chicks that are sort of into their look. I don't, I don't know, I don't know if that's really narcissism. You know, because narcissism has to do with something else. That, that, that really, you know, ha has to do with being more self-centered and shit. It doesn't have anything. You know, I remember, I dated a narcissistic woman this one time, and I remember saying something to her, like, we were in the car, I remember. And I said, you know, you're kind of narcissistic. And she said, you think? Like that. She knew. And then, and then she turns to me and says, you know, that has nothing to do with the way someone looks. She knew. She knew. She, she had sort of a kind of traumatic childhood, I guess. It happens to a lot of people, like, you know, like your parents not around or your parents dropping you off, like all the time. So you get, you know, you're like, um, you start having to go inward to can, you know, like to say, say to yourself, like, there's nothing wrong with you. You know, you're great. You know, like, like that. It's a, a self preserve you know, it's, it's, it's a survival thing that a kid does. It's sort of a ban feels abandoned. Uh, there's, there's supposedly other reasons for it too. A lot of times uh, a doting parent that just you know, places uh, too, too, much, uh, too much praise upon the child. Like, you know, like the child's attributes are really exaggerated by the parent and says it all the time. But she, she clearly knew I mean, maybe that's what this woman is sort of like narcissistic. I, I don't know. She's, she's got a great body, so maybe it's just that she's just proud of her body, which that could be it, too. I'm all for it. I am. If you're female and attractive, take your pictures. We talk about that on TikTok all the time, because it, it is. It's sort of an issue. Like it's all, like I'm, I'm fine with it. I, I think it's harmless stuff, you know? I do, I think it's harmless. People, people want to look at, at hot women. Women and men do. So, like I'm, I'm all for it, I think it's great. Um, but a lot of it is just so, it's the same in the genre, it's like the same music as you listen to shit. It's like nothing's ever different. You know what I mean? Like, here's the, here's the yoga video. It really isn't about yoga. And then there's music in the background. But don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm not putting it down. I think it's great. I think it's great. I've thought about doing yoga because I watched a few just strictly to see if I wanted to do yoga that was it I think I might because um, what I gather from watching the the only a few of those yoga videos I only watched a few is that it's a it's a lot of isometrics it can be it depends how you do it like um, yoga could be great exercise but it I I just see it as if you're just stretching. I don't know. That's me, though. I don't know what I'm, you know. 
I don't. I haven't done yoga. I'm just saying. You know, I have done stretching. I would. I would stretch before cross country. I would stretch before wrestling. Um. So I've done that. So I don't understand how that's gonna do too much, but. But I do see how yoga could be beneficial to building strength. I think so. Okay, come on. Um, but I, I do, I see it as like something like you would use isometrics. See, that's all, this is almost like totally through right there. That's thin set though, man, that shit will stick to anything. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know the Mormons do it. Let's see, the Mormons, man, I, I, I'm not sure, but I, I think that the, the ones that do the polygamy, those are real, like, tight societies that are, you know, run by men. I, I you know, I'm, if you're a regular Mormon, it's one thing. But if you're, like, in Arizona and you got several wives or whatever, I, I can't imagine that going real smooth. I, I can't imagine people being happy. I can't. Um, I don't even, you know, if I'm dating somebody, I, can, I do not want to, like, screw around. It's just, it's just too much, man. It's just like the thought of it, just like, it just bums me out. Like, talk about work and, don't you have enough to deal with with, like, one person? sad I'm I'm just real I guess I'm real conservative you know compared to my friends God, some of them are freaks I mean seriously like they'll, they'll say stuff and I'll be like really you know oh yeah I sort of got all the way around. Here. Pretty much, I, you know, as long as it's real stiff before I start using the primer, it'll be fine. And I'll prime it, and that'll take it all to one color. So it'll all be white, and then that way I can start sculpting it a whole lot easier. Um, it's, it's at that point where I have to define everything. guys in one sec, hang on. Do you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like it's sort of, it's going to clean up the, the piece a little bit. What I really got to do is get into the barn 
and fix the um, the, mer the the like main mermaid because um, something I don't know, man. Maybe there's a possum up there or something. I don't know, but something fell onto the tail of the mermaid, totally busted. So I have to um, have to get in there and do that. Um, I gotta I gotta take that fin off and replace the motor. It's no it's no big deal because I had to I had to work on it anyway. And uh, when I when I use the primer, there there is an element of it gluing shit down. Okay, so d don't don't ever discount. You know that the, the paint is gonna make shit stick together. I'm not I'm not saying it's a great glue or anything. That's not what I'm saying. But it do, it does have um, some structural. Uh, it adds structural integrity. I mean that's like foam. Man, you, you think foam doesn't add structural integrity? You are way wrong. Um, if if you if I had the money, if I had a couple thousand bucks, I would insulate my attic, and that that adds structural integrity to your roof. It's like um, putting on a um, a metal roof. It, it, you end up adding structural integrity. It makes it tougher. So I'll just let this this dry up pretty much, and I get it all white. Now, uh, once I get it all white, I'll probably have to go back into it with some kind of product. Maybe I'll just like tuck point it, for lack of a better term, tuck point cracks and stuff like that. There's still still areas that I had to build up like um, like say like this here I'll use something in thin set like maybe wire mesh put that down and then I'll do thin set over it so it'll all be real smooth going around it it's good you know it's gonna be a shell so it, it has to be it has to be smooth but the, the first thing first thing that I needed to do before I could start sculpting it was make the basic shape and that's what I did here it's the basic shape so it it looks you know it look, if you look at it you know what it's supposed to be that's all I was trying to achieve but does it look good no it looks like it looks ridiculous it's way too rough and the piece the, the model's going to be, the model that I use will, is beautiful. It's going to be beautiful. Flat out. There's no way the Venus is going to be unattractive. And she's going to be pregnant. I'm going to, I think what I can do is cast, my plan is to cast the model. Cast her, make a sculpture. Then after the sculpture is made, Add on the pregnant belly. Um, make it out of a product that's real light. Like maybe um, it'll be cast in foam. Maybe. And then I'll skim coat that thing. So get in. Well, actually, it doesn't matter because, you know, I could just use. Um, I could make a rubber for all that matters. That would look great. Um. I use pneumatics instead of uh, animatronic motors. Yeah, Venus. Venus has to be pregnant. Isn't she like the fertility thing? You don't get that? Oh, you do get that. Yeah. Um, so I guess, I, guess, I guess what I'm gonna do, hang on. Oh, ploppy face. Can we see the Bigfoot? Oh, oh yeah, let me just run over to the freezer and, and go get it.
you know, so, some of these, like these cracks, like down here. What I'm going to do is I'm probably going to before I um, I use but before before I use the primer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to take paper or take some paper and I'm going I'm to fill fill cracks that I fill cracks that I can fill like like this in here this in here I'll fill those this and then when the primer goes on it it'll sort of turn not paper mache but it'll really glue it down especially if I throw like say there's a hole this hole here I throw paint in it first before I start throwing paper in it, right? So it gets wet, you get it. Or maybe Mod Podge or something, you throw the paper in there and then you go over it with the, um, hang on, let me move. Then you go over it with the primer, then you go over it with the thin set, and then quite possibly the area where it's supposed to be real shiny. I, I think what I'm gonna do with that is that it's going to be, I'm, I'm gonna use epoxy resin so it's real smooth. That's what I think I'm gonna do. Oh, $10, I appreciate that because I'm broke as shit, whoever that was. It'll be all right. Um, but I appreciate that. Who did that? Oh, uniquities, of course. I could have said that without looking. It's the most loyal supporter you are. So that that's the plan. Now, I have to go work with Snail today. And I also have to, um, I got to, I got to make some, I got to go make a TikTok. So I got to go to the skater park because that's sort of my, um, my thing. I am, I'm trying to talk somebody into working with me and playing a opposite part of that, which would be a skater girl that deals weed. Um, I'm trying to talk somebody in. I, I, don't, I don't know if it's, they're into it, but I'm asking them because I think that they could play that part and quite a few other ones. Hang on, let me look at this. Let me look at these pawpaws over here. Now, pawpaws this year, I have a few. Here's one, here's two. Um, but honestly, there was a drought in the spring. And man, I didn't have my head together. I just couldn't hand pollinate. And to get like enough to sell, which sucks because I could use the money, it's fall. You have to hand pollinate. And my head wasn't in the right place. So I have a, a few pawpaws, even though that there was a total drought I had zero plums this year, not one. They all dropped off the tree. There was no rain. Cherries, I saw a few. There was no rain, man. They couldn't produce, they couldn't produce anything. I had several plants, pawpaws that did terrible. I wasn't, my head wasn't in the right place. So I was just sort of, yeah, fuck it. You know, it was real bad, not a great spring. I was preoccupied with stuff. I was just like, I was doing other shit. I see, a paw, I see some pawpaws in this tree. It's in a big tree though. But like, I had several trees that did something like this, which they were starved for water. So what they did was they didn't leap out on some branches and they started putting out root suckers at the bottom. Now the deal with the root sucker is it's a different plant. This is a uh, graft. So this is a um, prolific. So what's coming up from the roots, what's coming up from the roots is, uh, is this totally dead? No, it's sort of not. No, it sort of is. Yeah, it's dead. Yeah, so see, it, it sacrificed some branches. I'm gonna let this one, no, this broke, this. 
had sacrificed its green down lower. Um, it sacrificed branches to save a lot of the plant. It was dry as shit, and I just wasn't in the mood to water plants, you know? I mean, not one plum. I had plums, and then they all just dropped because there was zero water. Um, but I mean, I, I had, look, I have enough that I can have some pawpaws in October. Next year, because like not a fruiting year, all the, tr all the trees will do great. They will, they'll do great next year. So I'll be out here hand pollinating for sure. I'm not gonna let this happen again. Um, I believe this tree has a big clump on them. Let's see, yeah, I think so. Hang on, let's see. I feel weight on this branch, I just don't. Oh yeah, it's on this branch. Well, I don't wanna fuck this up. No, screw it. These are huge. I'm gonna, I'm gonna quit fucking with it. I don't want them to drop off. It's the best clump I have. You know, it's like, this tree, the Rappahannock, there was no, there was no water, and there were some flowers, there were flowers on it, but I was like, well, why am I gonna hand pollinate that thing when it just put out a few the year before? Like, let it rest. Um, there's se several trees are just, that should have fruit on them, do not have fruit on them, strictly because of lack of pollination. Bees do not pollinate pawpaws. What pollinates pawpaws is flies and beetles. So, I mean, some will get pollinated for sure without you pollinating, but if you want to sell them, or you want a lot of pawpaws, you better get your paintbrush out there and hand pollinate. Now, here's an example of a tree that didn't do good this year. You could see the lack of water, the size of the leaves. The, who's that? That's uniquities, of course. Thank you. Um, you can see the size of the leaves. They're real small. They're sort of, they're not how they normally look. And it's lack of water. It's total lack of water. There were times that I was like, I was worried I was gonna start losing a lot of branches on this one. So I started watering it. There's a totally dead branch down there. That's what they'll do. They'll like, let, they'll let the, um, let one part of the uh, tree die to, uh, so that the other one, uh, other parts of the tree get water. But you'll see, I, I do have pawpaws on it. It did make some fruit. Um, it even has fruit high up. I didn't pollinate this thing. This was strictly um, because it flowers the exact same time as the, the first tree that I ever got fruit off of. Exact same time. So they sort of pollinate each other. All of them, like a lot of them uh, flower at different times. So it's good. So one day you might be pollinating one tree and another tree and you just sort of like keep doing, doing that for like a month, honestly. It goes into, um, I don't know, about June 15th, I could, I could have been pollinating trees. But like I said, I was just like, my head wasn't in the right place. I just didn't care. I just guy, fuck it, you know? Let him, let him have a break. That's what I was thinking. I was like, let the pawpaw have a break. And next year, I'll pollinate and I'll make 15,000, 20,000. I think I could have made 10 this year. That's what sucks, man. It's not broke, so I need the money. So my inability to sort of pull myself together and pollinate the trees has really affected my bottom line. Because right now, you know, it's like I got taxes and all that stupid shit. I got to pay my insurance on the house. 
So it's like, it's like, fuck it, you know? Like, it, you don't, you don't want to put anything off, you know? It's just not helpful to, to put anything off, you know what I mean? Like, it always makes it worse. So if I would have just gone out here and pollinated, I could be taking pawpaws to uh, the Cornell store but, or into the city, but I did not, so fuck it, you know? What am I gonna do? Cry over spilled milk? It's, it's not a big deal. It is a big deal, but I'll be fine. I always work it out. Um, there's some stock. I'm just gonna sell that. It's not much. This one, this one has uh, some pawpaws too. See the way that the leaves are already going yellow? See how they're doing that and dropping? It was because of lack of water. I didn't get, we didn't get water here until three weeks ago, maybe. I mean, everything was, was dead. It was, it was all dead. Let me see if this tree is still alive. Hang on. Yeah, but it didn't look good. I have a tree out there, a sunflower that it's a sunflower pawpaw, and root suckers came up. Most of the main tree is dead. It is a fruiting tree, too. Most of the main tree is dead, but there is still lots of the main tree. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let the root suckers go. I'm going to let the root suckers go on this one, too, and let it be real bushy. Now, there's an advantage to this is that when the root suckers get it about six feet tall and they catch up to the, the grafted tree, they'll pollinate each other because they're different trees. Do you understand what I'm saying? They graft on rootstock. Seedlings, you know, so it's, it's coming from a seedling, so it's not the same thing. So they'll pollinate each other. So the trees that did real shitty water-wise, except for that big one back there, that's fruit on it. I'm going to, uh, I'm like the root suckers on this one. I'm gonna let the root suckers grow. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll let the root suckers go on this one. I mean, they're already like they're pretty. High. Well, this is this is not a root sucker here. This is part of the graft. So those look good. So because but like this. This, I have a feeling this is all dead. This will be cut here, and this will probably be cut here. This will probably be cut. This will probably be cut. This might not be cut, but I'll cut anything that's dead. And then, um, yeah, this, this doesn't have root suckers, actually. Those are coming off of the actual plant, the tree. So, all right, so the rain, the rain really helped pick this one up. Um, I'm glad there's no fruit on this tree. There, there's no way there could have been fruit on it. I would have had to, you know, clip the buds because there, there really was... What, what was that? Snake? Um, let's go see. I saw you, animal. Is that a... Is this be a bunny, dude. This is real tall grass. Let's see what we got here. This, um, if, if you let the grass grow real high, you cannot just get in there with a mower. You have to check for bunnies. If you don't, you're gonna regret it, seriously. I've been, like I, I, I did the whole main, main area. You'd be, you'd be surprised how these bunnies make these things. But there, there just needs to be like one little hole going in and then there's like a little area they dig in the ground. I think that was a snake. 
threw a bunch of bunnies out um, earlier this year. Uh, I had to keep the dogs away from them, of course. But I'll tell you what, it's not that, that hard. Some of these young animals, like deer and bunnies, they don't have a smell to them. It's like that on purpose. The dogs cannot really smell them. So I know, know that, listen, when, if you find a deer out there in a the field nestled up in grass and you don't see its mom, it wasn't abandoned. Do not take that thing home. You take that thing home, you're a jerk. You are, you're a jerk. Don't do that. So all these, before I cut back here, I'm gonna have to like look through here. Make sure I don't get any bunnies. Cause before they're weaned, they ain't gonna move. That they'll just, you'll run them over. I don't wanna bottle feed a bunny. It's a real issue too, it's difficult. You find, you find bunnies, you're gonna bottle feed them. You know, if something like that happens, you're gonna bottle feed them, they're gonna get diarrhea and die. You better be real careful what you do. Baby squirrels, be careful. You shouldn't do it, you should pass it off to a, um, oh, Wildlife rehabilitator. I don't care what the animal. Is. That's what you should do. I'll I'll work with invasive species, but I will not work with. I wouldn't work with a deer. No way, man. I got shit to do. I got shit to do, and um, you got to get that deer back into the woods. So you know, you had the thing about deer is like all the animals. If you you're gonna release them, you have to like. Be separated from, the, from them. You start turning that thing into a pet, like say you have a deer, you bottle feed it, you put it out. Those deer do not last one year. They're all dead in the first year. You habituate them to your dog, you habituate them to your cat, you habituate them to people. It's such a huge mistake. And people just, oh, I'm like, they wanna help. Some people actually want to help. Some people want to prove that they're a good person. And you'll see the people that pr want to, you know, prove that they're good people. You'll see them on YouTube. You will. You will, st you will see them on YouTube. Um, they have the deer. They're bottle feeding it. Oh, I, I rescued the deer is what they say. It's always, I rescued the deer. Oh, you did. You rescued the deer? Where was it? It was in a field. It was in grass. I didn't see its mom. You stole the deer, is what you did. They steal the deer. That deer is never, they, they never make it. The person's bottle feeding it, falls in love with it. And then, you know, if somebody finds out, you have it on YouTube, if I see it, man, I'm gonna call the Department of Conservation. Sorry, that's the way it is. It's wildlife, you're not supposed to have it. You don't turn wildlife into a pet. Sam, my raven, is an African hybrid species that I bought from a breeder. You can buy them at pet stores. If you want to crow a raven, that's what you have to do. You do not take one from the wild. If you do, and somebody finds out about it, they'll come and just take your bird away. Now, a bird they would probably take to a, um, like a, a zoo situation, like if it was a crow, there's places that they could probably take that. Um, but the deer, man, I'm telling you, do not leave the deer alone. If, if you like the deer, leave them alone, leave them alone. By the way, don't pick up amphibians, toads. If you're gonna pick them up, you should wear a glove. The oil from your hand burns the toad, okay? So it's my suggestion that if you like wildlife, you could look at it, don't touch. Like I see snakes all the time. We only have like garter snakes here. I see them all the time. I'm not picking them up. Look here, why would I need to do that? There's, there's no reason in the world that you need to pick up the wildlife. Just leave it on the floor. 
That's probably best. It is. It's probably best. For all concerned. Um, I mean, they're, it's cool. They're cool. I'm not saying that they're not cool. I love my goats. I do. My goat. My other one died. I gotta go shoot a, um, I gotta go shoot some video down at the, um, what you call it? Maybe I'll do that live. I need, um, I need a camera to be able to do it though. So I can only go live on one. So I'll probably go live on YouTube. Of course I'm gonna go live on YouTube. I make money on YouTube. Look at that. Do you realize that $20, that really fucking helps me out. I haven't been doing YouTube lately because it gets to the point where everybody's saturated. They don't want to see my shit. But I was doing it all the time. I was insane. And I was just doing it all the time. And I, periods of my life, I'm like that. I will live stream, live stream, live stream. Sometimes to take my mind off of shit. Sometimes because I need money. Whatever. Sometimes because I got nothing better to do. And I sort of like doing it. They're all true. It all depends. Um, I was doing that... I doing on Instagram because I felt like everybody was um, sick of me on YouTube. And it's sort of like a connection that I can have with people. I'm, you know, I'm in the country. There's nobody here. So there is sort of like this social connection I get with live streaming or like being in a, a group chat with people on Instagram. It's a fact. Uh, I'm not the most social person. I'm not. I wouldn't go. If somebody, ought, if somebody asked me to go to a party, do you think that I would go? Hell no. I'm not going to a party. No. I, I'd feel uncomfortable doing that. I wouldn't do it. But I do need a connection with people. When I was in the city, I'd just go outside and walk around. It was great. But, um, you know, here, it's just, you know, I have neighbors. They're all cool and everything. They are. Um, what's up, one Sean Bond? How you doing? How's, how's the daughter doing? Um, anyway. So that's, that's on the shell. It's going again this afternoon. I'll be back putting a coat of, um, primer on it. What am I going to do with Snail today? I think I'm going to take him to tall grass again because I'm going down by... I'm going to the skateboard park to do a TikTok. And then I'm also going to work him at Woe at the skate park, I think. Because he'll do Woe, but I have to, a lot of times, I have to slide my foot underneath him, which is fine. Um, you just keep doing it and doing it and doing it, and he's got to be good at it. Um, join the community, have a party where you live. I, didn't I just explain that I don't like to do that? I thought I just explained that. Didn't I just explain that? Join the community. What the hell are you talking about? I have neighbors. I like them. That's not what I'm talking about. I talk to my neighbor all the time. That's not what I'm talking about. And I said, I don't like parties. Is that so? Why is that so strange for everybody to fucking understand? Some people don't like parties. You don't get it? Put a microphone in my hand and I can go up on stage in front of 200 people. If I'm at a party with 50, 45, 50 people, I don't know, I'm not going to like it. Why, why is this so difficult? So I get something out of this. This is like, I have a microphone. When I'm at a party, I don't, I feel uncomfortable. It's not that hard. There's a lot of people. Daniel Tosh, I believe, has this. It's not that unusual. When I went to a party when I was younger, I was so uncomfortable, I'd get drunk as shit. So why, go, why would I go to a party? Every one of my neighbors, this is true, I like everyone in this area. It's a fact. I was getting asked to go to parties and stuff all the time. 
and I was like not showing up. Finally, I said to my one neighbor back here, that's great, Dennis, I said, dude, I have this, this thing about parties. It's like an anxiety. It's a social anxiety. I can't do it. I just, I'm uncomfortable. I can do it, but I'm just like, I'm not having fun. I'm not talking. I'm not doing anything. I, j I just can't do it. He stopped inviting me. He said, he said something like this. He said, oh, I know somebody just like that. It's no big deal. Don't worry about it. I like him. I, I, like, I like going over there. I'll talk to him. I like to go talk to him. I like to talk to him. I like to talk to her. I like to talk to him. What I don't like is a party with a bunch of people I don't know. Like I said, you put the microphone in my hand, you put me on stage, I'm fine. There's 200 people. I can do that. Put me on TV, I'm fine. You put me in the social setting of a party. Um, I wouldn't even like a family reunion. I can't stand it. It's just like, there's so much pressure. There's just like, I don't want to go into it. I, I can't even believe that I said this and this, but you really don't understand this. Join the community and have a party. I don't want to ever go to a party. I don't need to do that. I don't. Like when I was in New York City, what I would do is like, okay, so I've been inside, right? I'm in this city. I've been inside. I would make sure that I went outside two, three times a day to deal with people. I'm walking down the street. I see, hey, what's up? That's not a party. I go over to the grocery store. There's five, six people I'm friendly with. Hey, what's up? This isn't that unusual, really. It isn't, it isn't that unusual. And to think that like back in my drinking days, I would just sit here and get drunk because there was like this expectation of me going to the party. And there was an expectation of me having fun at the party too. I, there, there, there's absolutely no way I was gonna have fun at the party unless I was drunk. So I'd always get drunk. Now I'd wake up the next day, oh my God, what did I say? What did I do? So, you know, listen, I'm not gonna drink ever. The last, I was telling my friend this, I was telling my friend this, she has a similar thing. I was telling my friend this the other day, the last party I went to was eight or 10 years ago. It was this girl, she invited me, you know, really cute. I had to go, I had to go. It's like trying to start something up. So I had to go, I had to make this like, and she said during the party, she comes up to me and goes, you seem um, socially clumsy. I've never seen you like this. I said, yeah, I know. I don't like parties. And she said something like, oh, just have fun. Go talk to people. You're funny. Go be funny. Oh yeah, that really, that's really going to work. Most of the time, I think I put up with it for about two and a half hours, right? Most of the time, I hung out with the dog. I had nothing to say, nothing. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I had nothing to say. I hung out with the dog. I even took the dog for a walk. After she said that, I waited about 45 minutes. I was fucking out of there. I was like, I, ca I can't deal with this. Like she made me even feel more self-conscious because she pointed it out. Like you seem really socially clumsy. Yeah, you think? No kidding. I'm, I was very uncomfortable. So after that, I said to myself, I'm not going to this shit. Nobody's forcing me into this. I'm not going under any circumstances. I can do a small gathering of five people, six. I could probably do that um, if it's business related, meaning um, like I can teach a lesson with five, six people, whatever, whoever it is. But do I really want to go out to dinner? Do I really want to go out to dinner with the client? 
no, I don't really want to do that. I don't. And a lot of people ask me, like, do you want to go get dinner? I'm like, no, I got stuff to do. I'm just not comfortable doing that. It's just too, like, here you are sitting at a table, and I, I feel like I have to entertain, and I don't want to entertain. And if I want to entertain, I have to do it a certain way. Um, that's it. I mean, it's just the truth. It's not just me. Man, my friend, man, I was talking to her. God, that was yesterday. About the same shit. It's like, don't, don't put me in. You can't put me in these situations and expect me to function and look normal. You know? I just, there's a lot of situations that I would be able to pull off and be totally fine. Um, a meet and greet thing. I could do, I could do that, but no, I'm not going to do a meet and greet. I have 180,000 subs. I'm not doing that, but hypothetically, if I had 2 million subs or something, I was going to do a meet and greet and a few people would come from 20 miles away. I could do that. That would be fine. Because once again, that puts me in a situation where it's not, it's not a social thing. It's not, it's not a social thing. It's a performance thing and I can do it. So do you understand what I'm saying? Like some things I know I'm good at, some things I'm not good at. To say like, well, you, you'll be, you could get better at this. Um, no, not, not really. No, that's already been tried. I, I can't. So why force myself to do something like that? Burning up energy in a negative way where I can just know what I'm good at, know what I'm bad at, know my limitations, and go from there. I was thinking about something earlier today, too, and um, I wish I could remember because it seemed really important. Um, I know what it has to do with. Oh, I do know what it has to do with, and I, I know what it was. It was something that I read, and what I read was these four reasons that, that people are happy. And the last reason made a whole lot of sense to me. And the last reason that they cited that never once was it money, okay? Never once. Um, the last reason that was cited was that um, you don't worry about what other people think. It's so true. If you're going to worry about what everybody thinks, it doesn't work. So putting, my, putting myself in a situation where I have to worry about what people think makes no sense. When I can have situations where I don't really care what you think. Does this make sense? I hope this makes sense. I, I'm, ha I'm happy. I do what I want and therefore it makes me happy. If I didn't do what I wanted, I wouldn't be happy, but I'm sort of content with my life. I could, I could have more money for sure. That's periodically throughout the year I have, pro it's always the fall. It's always the fucking fall. I have insurance for the house. I have to pay, get caught up on property taxes. It's always the fall. This is always the worst month. September, October. So I get through October, I'm fine. Um, but that's, having money just sort of makes it so that you don't have to worry about not having money. It doesn't necessarily make you happy. There's plenty of people, to, I can think of this one person I know, that she's got money. And she's not that happy. I can think of two people like that. Like, the money isn't gonna buy her happiness and both of those people know that. The one person has a tremendous amount of guilt from her money. You know, it's like she got it through, it's a long story, but she got it because something bad happened. You know, she didn't like the money, I can tell. Um, it's not gonna give her peace. You know, if something bad happens in your life and say there's like some kind of structured annuity or something for you because something terrible happened in your life, that's never gonna replace the terrible thing that happened in your life. Do you know what I'm saying? Like if, if like 
somebody you love dies, no amount of money's gonna be able to replace that. Um, you, uh, like you lose, lose your legs or some, th something like that. No amount of money can replace that. So m m money really won't buy happiness. It won't. It just, um, it's a drag not having it. But, um, I think those four reasons, I can't remember the other four, but they all made sense in my life. I was like, yeah, okay, check, check. And the big one that I remember was, um, don't, don't worry about what people think. And I, 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 I came to that conclusion a while ago. It was like, after I quit drinking, I was like, Fuck it, I don't drink anymore. I'll say and do what I want because nobody's gonna be able to say, he's a fucking drunk. I'm saying this and doing this because I'm stone sober and I'm making the choice to do it. That's it. And that's when my, my life sort of changed as soon as I stopped uh, drinking. So, uh, you know, I've had these epiphanies in my life um, that just, things don't make sense and then they do like um, um, sometimes like some things don't need to be said to certain people like if if you have if you all relationships are different every human being that you deal with is different but you have this like real unusual relationship with someone where it's like um, like a like I've known dogs that will um, function on a sneeze, right? But it's a human being and you communicate with the human being with almost no verbal communication. And if there is verbal communication, it's all talked about in a roundabout way so that it's not stressful. So you could be talking about something totally stressful not acknowledging it verbally, it both parties understand. Um, that was an epiphany recently. I was like, what's the point of saying anything to certain people? I'm thinking about somebody in particular. But like, what's the point of saying anything where everybody understands what the other is saying, so why is there any type of communication, trying to drag the person, um, trying to drag um, language out of a person that doesn't want to talk. That's not, that's not helpful. If you understand what they're saying, don't make them speak clear English. Not everybody communicates the same way. Some communication is nonverbal for sure. So for that person that at times, well, could be verbal, but um, doesn't want to talk about emotional stuff, uh, you, can't, you can't force them into it. It's like telling somebody like, you're going to go to therapy and you're going to get better. Uh, no, I'm not, right? You don't ever tell somebody what they're going to do. You don't tell them that they're going to do therapy. You don't tell anybody ever what they should do. If they ask for advice, you can give them different avenues that they could take. You could help them take an, an off ramp and shit like that. But there's no reason to, you know, to tell somebody what you think they should do. That's like a parent telling a kid, the kid's adult and the parent's saying, no, you should be a plumber. Yeah, but dad, I don't want to be a plumber. I'm going to art school. Huh? okay. It's school. You can always go back to plumbing. Shit like that. Uh, you know, I, when I think about my parents, I've said this so many times that, like, I could have done worse. When they were around, I, I thought that, um, I thought they were both pretty horrible at times. But now that I look back at everything, I'm like, I was pretty lucky. I was. I was pretty lucky. Um... Both of them were really sort of civilized. I'm, I'm way less civilized than they are, um, but I, I, uh, I retained something 
from watching them behave. Um, you, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but, um, and, and you believe I, I saw my dad drunk and shit like that, so I did see him uncivilized and stuff, but I'm talking about, like, socially, they both were really civilized people. Like, I, 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 I was with my dad once and somebody tried to start a fight with him. My dad walked slowly away. Why? Because I was right there. I was right there. I, kn I knew it. I was watching my dad. I'm like, my son's right here. I couldn't have been more proud of that too when he did that. He said, come on, Pete, let's go. My mom, too, as crazy as my mother could be, my mom had this real... So she was um, executive director of the Kidney Foundation. So she had to, you know, not be show her crazy side at times. Um, and she could do it. Um, you know, like if my mother was put in a uh, situation... Like a, a public situation, I, ca I can't really, nothing comes to mind, but like a, a public situation, my mother would have never been like rude where I would be. Fuck you, you know? My mother would never say anything like that. There's no way, there's no way my mom would have. She'd never do, like if she was still alive now, she'd never be trolling on the internet. She'd never be doing anything like that. She was, you know, like, she was nuts, but she sort of had a moral compass. Both of them sort of had a moral compass. Even my father, the racist, like, who I still can't figure out to this day why he would say that shit. The guy with the real dark skin and black hair, you know, he would say the stupidest shit. And then I would see him, I would see him, I, I saw him several times do, he was kind. He was kind to people of color, so I don't, it's almost like he grew up in this time and he grew up like with dark skin and black hair at a private school in St. Louis where I think, I think he acquired this like need to fit in. So he, he would like stuff because St. Louis was, yeah, it's pretty there's some cities like this that it's like, like Kansas City. Um, and at the private school, I could see growing up when he did, I could, I could see things being said and him trying to like sort of fit in. That's the only thing I can figure out. I never heard him say anything negative about Native Americans, so it was always positive. It's a terrible thing what we did to them. That was his line. Yeah, my dad and my mom, they weren't that bad. They weren't, they were all right. My dad, I never saw him work out though, I swear to God. When he was in high school, he was an athlete. Then he broke his leg uh, playing football. And um, it was a thing back then, like Jackie Gleason was a thing. Like the dude with the big belly, like that was a thing. Like the Hager double knit slacks that would like, they didn't have a belt. My dad wore these pants. They didn't have a belt. They had like a, a thing right here, right? They were, I think Hager double knit slacks is what they were called. So they'd be like slacks. Like he'd wear those a lot of, t a lot of times like, uh, like business. He'd be like, you know, it's terrible looking. Um, but he was also, my dad was sort of preppy too. It was, it was, it was always, khakis and shit like that. I don't, I don't think I ever saw my dad in a pair of jeans, ever. No fucking way. Never, never. I saw him in like chinos or, or khakis. He never wore jeans. Never, I saw my dad ride a bicycle one time. Saw my mother ride a bike. We rode a bike with her. I remember one time we were riding a bike with my mom. It was a Raleigh, it was a women's bike and it was really fast. Like whenever we rode it, it was the fastest bike. It was great, great gearing and everything, great bike. And um, she had 
uh, uh, like a, a kid seat, like a baby seat on the back of the, the bike. And we were going somewhere. We were going on a bike ride. And my little brother, who's nine years younger than me, was in the seat, to, you know, behind her seat. And she's pedaling up this hill and the thing falls off, like goes backwards. My little brother was fine. He's freaked out though. But um, she could ride a bike. Um, there was all those products like in the 60s and 70s that were just garbage for kids. Like, you know, there's stuff still taken off. It is, it's constantly taken off. Like, oh, a kid died in that car, car seat. Shit, man. I saw, oh, uh, recently I saw like a, uh, what, what are those, like a baby seat, like a, a high chair. Um, and I was gonna grab it for Cleophis. And then I was doing something, man. I was in Elmira. And then I forgot to go pick it up. I'm not going in that direction, so I'm not gonna go get it. Sucks, Cleo needs one of those. I don't know. How about when my family went camping? I know where Franklin is. It's a difficult subject to speak about. I understand and just let me know if I shouldn't bring it up. Thank you. What are you talking about? Dude. What's up, MZ Playhouse? All right, so I guess I'm gonna go Maybe I'll live stream. I'm gonna go take the dog somewhere and I'm gonna go shoot a TikTok. I need one of these phones for the TikTok. Um, I guess I'm going to the skate park. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to the skate park. All right, thanks everybody. Thanks one Sean Bond. I got dirt on me. I did, I got dirt on me. Lighter. Oh, hang on here. I'm very attractive. Gee, thanks. Thanks, dude. I really appreciate that. But you're not my type, but I, I do appreciate that. Oh, you're a lady, really? Wow. That's good to know. I appreciate it. Those are compliments. I, you know, I mean, if it's a dude, I appreciate it. It's a nice thing to hear. But yeah, Reno. Really like hearing that. Like your name, Reno. Oh, you're 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 a female too? Wow, I, that does make me feel a little bit less homophobic. Right? <laughs> No, it's nice to hear that. I, I appreciate that. That's very nice to hear. I, I wish I could only see you, but I can't. It's, it's not Instagram. Anyway, I'll see y'all. Bye-bye. Y'all have a good day. Thanks again. It's only YouTube. It's not Instagram. You, Instagram, you can do that. You can, hey, how you doing? Bye-bye.